I would kind of disagree only with one thing Shan said, which is like the beans is a bad example, right? The beans is a bad example because beans are consumable. A good what example kind of would be baked beans or jelly beans. A good example would be if the father planted a, a bunch of bean stalks beans. and then gave the son the land with all the bean stalks in it, and it's constantly producing beans. That would be generational wealth. Giving him the beans wouldn't be that generational wealth because he could eat them beans and then there ain't no beans left. But he can't eat the whole bean. <laughs> he can't eat the beanstalk garden. You know what I'm saying? What? He can't. Actually, clout, but even then, it's still, it's still, if we wanted to look at it figuratively speaking, it is still the wealth. What he does with it is still on him. You still, yeah, what he him, does you still it, gave him the wealth. I, now, if you're going to blow the money, I would classify those he still as blew riches, it, but I would classify those as riches, but not wealth. Because in, wait, from my wait, perspective, what, wealth is what something that reproduces. The beans and their so. beans make him stronger or something like that. <laughs> It wouldn't matter no, because, because 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 it wouldn't be generation like it wouldn't be generational because well, it wouldn't be continuing to produce. Well, Cloud, I, I get what you're saying. That's what they teach in the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I you know what I teach. We I played a game. I bought it from uh, Robert Kawasaki. Here's cash flow from him. Where the difference between rich and wealth, rich means you got a bunch of money. Wealth means your money is making money. Making so money I understand what you're saying. saying. Um, but the point is. You can still fuck off that land, and you can fuck off those beans. You can burn down those bean stalks. And so if you got to, if, 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 if so, you got the kid with the beans, and you say, "Well, I ain't give you no land, enough, but it's still something." He could eat them, okay. but he can also burn those burns those those those, those stalks down. I think that's what Sweeney is trying to explain. No, the point is, I gave you something. Now, what you do with it, I hope you do something well with it. But I gave you something where before that you had nothing. So, so the smart man would plant the beans. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. No, that, that, that's that's seeds. Never the bean, is, the bean, oh, you can plant the bean, bean is a seed. The bean, the bean is, is a, a tangible asset. It's how because all generational is wealth is is you passing something down from one generation to the next. Yeah, I'm giving no, you that's, something. No, that's an inheritance. That's an inheritance. That's not generational what you wealth. Think, no, that's, what you no, that's what the definition of generational wealth, wealth is. is. Is generation passing one thing to another generation? That's what generational wealth means, is that I'm one generation and I pass some shit down to the that's next an generation. Inheritance. Yes. That's an inheritance, but I mean, I guess, I guess that's fuck? generational wealth. Then. <laughs> I mean, we're changing the word, but that's all that's yeah, all it really means. <laughs> nah, because not everybody that got an inheritance has generational wealth. No, it, that's what I'm saying is that we, we're muddy in the okay, waters like, as if minute, generational wealth is supposed to trans... That's we're not saying... That's we're we're muddy in the water by saying generational as if it's supposed that that generational means it has to span across multiple generations. That's not necessarily true. Generational just means from one generation to the next generation. So let me ask you this, Wayne. Right, I'm, 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 I'm looking at the definitions and, it, and it's saying to... it has to be an asset. It, it has to be an asset that's passed down from one generation to another. Way. So if it's so not an asset, this, it's Wayne. not generational okay. wealth. Let me ask you this, Wayne. And, and an asset is asset... something that brings in money. Okay. So let me let me ask you a question real quick. So Sweeney, do you think this is an asset? Okay, can this be classified as an asset? I give you a business that grosses forty six thousand a month, but the only way to gross forty six thousand, I had to give you the strategy on how to make that money and maintain it. I could give you the wheels, I can sign over the company, but unless I give you the strategy. And the key to maintain forty six thousand or higher, which is a quota for the company, isn't that knowledge considered an asset on no. Lewis's defense? No, no. Wouldn't it be intellectual no, property? Because the thing is, because the, the, the building, because the building, the the equipment, everything in there still has value. You're passing them down. No, most valuable okay, thing. So what let me argue. Do, let me argue that. What are the most valuable asset or the most valuable part of that generation wealth? Is actually being able to generate forty six thousand, and that code, that knowledge, allows you to be able to to bring a company up from the ground at any Still given not moment. Generational wealth. Still not wealth. Hmm. And this is why the recipe to Coca Cola is hidden in the vault. Lewis, exactly. you got knowledge. I think we let the the intellectual property. Our property our to be able to, 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 to they're right. Property. Intellectual that's property isn't. But the knowledge is also the intellectual property. No, yeah. there's an actual tangible thing that says this is how you make Coca Cola, which is the <clears> actual <throat> asset. And exactly. if you gave it to everybody, of course, they, it, it will. Of course, I will lock my recipe in a vault. 
The asset, the the asset, asset is the Coca Cola. But I'm not trying to have anybody replicate what I have. No, as an that's asset. not true because I watched Good Burger, and I'm gonna tell you when I watched Good Burger, said that Good recipe Burger. they had in that sauce was the main asset. Okay, it wasn't it, it wasn't a, it wasn't the ground beef. It wasn't the ground chuck. It was the goddamn ingredients. Use Coca Cola is a, so hold is on, a bad so why, why, why are you locking up the, the, the ingredients in the safe, but you won't balance your goddamn checkbook? <laughs> no, I know I, he was going to First get of all, first and foremost, because your I checkbook's say, not an asset. I didn't say. I didn't say. I didn't say that you don't balance a checkbook. I said to actually the physical aspect of having a checkbook and having to balance it is obsolete in comparison to the fact that we actually have computers and things like that to actually do the work for you. You know what? You know what, Sweeney? I got your number. That's all I, I said was obsolete. I'm just <laughs> I got you. No, I got him. I got him in my oh, trick bag. I just you, put you him in my trick bag. You would actually be losing money. You actually losing money every time you try to balance your, your checkbook. I got yourself, you, Sweeney. I got your ass. Computer. Now, I'm about to say this. And, 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 and Listen, this for, hey, <laughs> Sweeney, you a barber, right? Yep. So whenever you pass down your generational wealth as a barber, are you going to pay? Is it better for you to pass down them goddamn wall clippers, them T-liners, or the knowledge on how to do a fade? I want to see how you're going to answer this to me. Mm. Uh, you said which one would be more valuable? See? That ain't so, what I said. You said He's which mean, one would be considered the asset passing down? What's more, what's more, what, what is more of generational of wealth? Them T-liners? What do y'all do? Baby lists? T-liners? Or the, or the damn, teach them how to do a damn fade on that damn mannequin at home. The T-liners. Oh, God. Lord, I don't think y'all understand. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you. Hold on, wait. I'm going to tell you true. why. I'm going to tell you why. Right. The T outliners, because I don't give a fuck how much I tell them how to do a fade. If they ain't got no T outliners, you can't do it. Okay, watch this. You let him craft the question where you couldn't answer correctly. Your money would be accrued by the money you made, possibly buying the barbershop, having having a tangible property from off your work. Freak T lines and clippers. If you don't have the skill to go and cut, those are those are obsolete. You just going to patch people head up. That's not true. You, you know how I got my start was because somebody gave me. Oh, y'all talking attention. to a barber who got his start <laughs> because a, I was able to because somebody gave me a pair of clippers. Okay, watch this. I don't care how much I sat there and watched the motherfucker cut hair. I don't care how many I don't care how many YouTube videos I watched on how to I cut hair care. until I actually got a pair of clippers in my hand to do the work. There was no cutting hair. That's okay, interesting, Sweeney. That's what? almost like how I said you're not a leader unless you have someone following you, right? It's kind of the same thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there is no cutting hair without the yeah, clip. Nobody agree with you but Sweeney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, look. Sometimes sometimes being the smartest motherfucker in the room is a lonely spot. <laughs> well, you ain't the smart one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a... It's oh, a, it's a Oh, it's a good yeah, question. Anyway. It's a good question that that uh bruiser posed. Okay, give real life scenarios about yourself. So here's here's my pushback and the caveat when I hear Hank say what he says. He's correct. You understand? If I'm listening to Hank, the conservative view says to spend time with that person, ask questions, and evaluate by the eye test and valid findings. When necessary information is clear, either explore further or part ways. That's the easiest way you could do it. Okay, he got this, he got that, things are lined up. That works for me or it doesn't work for me. But that doesn't speak for the person who was accomplished and then something catastrophic happened. And I'm talking for myself. In 2012, I had a house in the, in Brooklyn when I moved to Brooklyn, which was $512,000. It's a million dollar home now but I wasn't able to keep it because I had horrible tenants. And at that point in time, I had a woman in my life, right? But I had people saying, you know, you're that person. A lot of people are hypocritical. They get on the pulpit and, you know, espouse critiques, flinging stones, and they live in glass houses. Don't let that fly over your head. You understand? Categorically, a man could fail. The lady that was with me, she left me. 
You understand? Whole world, vehicle repo, the whole nine. Old taxes, worst time of my life. That time, you saying, while I'm building myself up, credit destroyed, a woman is never supposed to touch me if she doesn't see me with the prototypical 700 score, everything together, he's a bad bet. Rather than sit down with that man, I'm going back to the conservative view, see what he's about, see how he's able to, he's going to pick himself up and then make a valid discussion at that point in time. I'm going to rock with this dude. I see he has an ambition. I see he, you know, life knocked him down, but you got to go through something to, to get through something. But he's not trying to stay there. It's okay to be messed up, but not okay to stay there. Then years later, he worked it back, credit score back up, mid sevens, paid off all prior debts, IRS, good with him. You're making it sound like those guys, when y'all make those judgment calls, are losers. And that's how some feel. Because I've heard people say that. They said it to me, but then they watched me do the 360. And those are the same people that can't say nothing now. They're not blocked or anything. So I think we have to be like real careful because there's a caveat of people that life happens. And you might not know their story, but if you meet it initially and your daughter is speaking to this man, you're like, mm -mm, he's a bad bet. Walk away from him. Then five years later, he on top of the game, but he was willing to love your daughter with, with everything he had. He just needed somebody to be his rock for a little while, while he got himself together. This conversation has to be very careful because we got people listening here that's not at their best. Majority of this country is paycheck to paycheck. Majority of this country don't know where their next dollar's coming from if the month and then they ain't got a whole month of paychecks. You understand? I'm one of them lucky ones because I got grind and grit in me. So when I listen to these discussions, we all men here. You got to account for those that get hit by life, get knocked down, brush themselves up and be able to have the discussion and say, you know what? If a man is constantly going in that direction, nothing good, the the Ray Ray, the Pookie, I get it. The man that gets knocked on his ass for doing the right thing by people and they destroy his property, cause him hunt, almost a quarter of a million dollars in damage and stuff, and then he has to sell it at a loss because he did the right thing by people. Is he also supposed to be judged by that same brush? We have a responsibility because those people are scared to even have those discussions because we're judging them and they, and they hurting. So tonight I want to speak for the wounded because I know what I had to go through to get where I'm at right now. And I think it's kind of unfair for them. But I get it. We need these discussions. I could take my spoonful of bitters. But discussions have to be had. I land my plane there.